Hello, my friends. I wish you a very, very good morning. It is lovely, lovely to be with you again. My name is Mr. Dilly, and welcome to Mr. Dilly Meets Creativity Special today. And it's wonderful. We are being beamed once again all across the, all sorts of schools across the, our wonderful country of the United Kingdom today. Uh, today is very, very exciting. I, the last Mr. Dilly was seen an awful long time ago. If, and if you tuned in for that, it was for World Book week of course which was the beginning of march easter has happened since then we've all eaten too much chocolate and i hope you're sort of slowly deflating i still have some left which is great uh but uh lots of fun and laughter today now what am i going to be bringing you what delights what treasures not any chocolate i'm afraid i know but we have some wonderful things coming up for you today today as i said is a creativity special and it's to encourage you uh to uh give things a go really uh, to give things maybe uh you, you, you may be okay at but maybe you want to give a uh, sort of another go at uh, drawing. We're going to have a go at drawing. We're going to have a go at using words, going to go at using language and stuff like that in all sorts of fun ways today. Uh, so what you should have, and I, and I think I emailed all your teachers about this, but just in case, you should have in front of you uh, uh, some paper and some pens or pencils. That's all you need for today, some paper or some pens or pencils. Uh, and if you have that, you're ready to go today. So what have we got coming up? What delights have we got coming up? First of all, today... My first guest for you today is fantastic author, fantastic illustrator. She'll be uh, coming up later on. Uh, the wonderful author of the Pizzazz series, the Bad Nana series. She'll be talking about her new book today, The Music in Me as well, as well as her latest Pizzazz series as well. We have the wonderful Sophie Hen coming up. Round of applause for Sophie Hen coming up today. And Sophie will be coming up very, very soon. It's some strange man with enormous hands coming in now. I don't know where enormous hands in, but some strange German guy, I guess. Anyway, uh, Sophie is coming up very, very soon. Wonderful Sophie Hen today. But as if we needed more, we have more for you. Also coming up, we have a brilliant man, amazing author, illustrator. He's the, uh, the uh, author and illustrator of the Shifty McGifty series, uh, the um, Genie uh, and Teeny series. And uh, also he'll be talking about his latest book in that. And uh, it's, of course, the wonderful man himself. Mr. Stephen Lenton is also up today. Stephen Lenton is coming up today. Oh, man, this is incredible. I'm, I'm out of breath already. We haven't even just started. Now, also, if you watch previous Mr. Lee Meets, you know we have a, a poet in residence, a wonderful children's poet. It has a website. It's a fantastic website. And, and teachers and students, if you want to check out any children's poetry, uh, there's, uh, there's well-known poets on there and all sorts of other poetry put on there. The Dirigible Balloon uh, is the website. And the man we have coming up today with a, with a poetry sort of focused literacy activity is Mr. Jonathan Humble. Mr. Jonathan Humble from the Dirigible Balloon is also coming up today. All that coming for you. But we also have other things. I mean, come on. Can you, how much more do you want? But um, we've had a giveaway going on Twitter uh, for last week or so for uh, a copy of uh, Sophie's uh, Pizzazz book and uh, and a little doodle there. Also, uh, Stephen's uh, coming up new a uh, genie and teeny book and uh, a signed print and a badge as well. So Stephen had a badge as well, Sophie. I'm just saying Stephen had a badge as well. That's what I'm saying. Uh, we have that the winners of that giveaway coming up later on. Also, if you did watch the uh, World Book Day, Rickin Parekh, the author of the worst, sorry, the illustrator of the worst class in the world series, did a, a special drawing of himself with the, the area, uh, with the tiger who came to tea. And we are be announcing the winners of that particular drawing, the school, a bit later on as well. One last thing, and then we're going to my first guest today. Fantastic. So there's a live chat on uh, YouTube. If you click on it, you should have the live chat up there. Please, any comments you want to make on there, as long as they're lovely comments, of course, uh, please put on there. If you have any questions for Sophie, who we're going to be talking to in a minute, Sophie him. if you have any questions for Stephen Lenton, if you have any questions for Jonathan Humble, please uh, put them on that live chat. All you need to do is to put your school name and the student's name, first name, who asked the question, and then we will field some of those questions and hopefully uh, get to ask some of those to Sophie, Stephen, and Jonathan. So please uh, ask around, live chat, get those questions on the screen, and then we'll put some of them Sophie and Jonathan's way. Have your piece of paper in front of you, your pens. My friends, we are ready to go. So please put your hands together and welcome to Mr. Dilly Meets Creativity Special, the lovely Sophie Hen, Sophie Hen, here she is, the woman herself. Hello, Hello everyone. Hello, Sophie. Hello. How are you? Nice to see you. Way. Morning. Yeah, no, you're there. You're you're in. You're in. How's things? 
Yes, good, good. Um, I'm feeling a little bit under the weather. We talked yeah. about this, but um, hopefully I won't yeah. cough too much and I won't need to blow my nose. So Sophie is, is quite being amazing today because uh, she, she's not feeling too well, but she's here for you and she's working through it all today. <laughs> And uh, it's going to bring you some wonderful things. Now, uh, Sophie, um, we have uh, various things coming up today. But first of all, for those who aren't familiar with, uh, you know, your books and illustrations and stuff, could you just sort of tell us a little bit about, you know, who you are, what you do, all that kind of stuff? That would be lovely. Okay, well, I am Sophie Hen, and I am an author and an illustrator, and I haven't always done that. I've only been doing it, um, I think my first book, well, I know my first book was published in 2014. So how long ago is that? That's eight years ago, eight years ago. So I've been doing this for eight years and um, and I love it. And yes, I've written lots of picture books. I've written um, the Bad Nana series um, I've, and illustrated, written and illustrated the, as we were saying, Pizzazz series. Um, oh, and the, just happened to have it here, the Life Size series. I've done some non-fiction oh. as well. Um, Life Size Baby, I haven't seen that one, the Life Size. Well, it's not out yet. That's an it's exclusive. Not out. You've got a lot of books coming out this year, Sophie. Have you been keeping them all back? There's, like, I've, you've had no, two. I've just been, well, it was a lockdown. We needed to do something, didn't we? So, uh, do, do it, so was, it, was either, it was either writing or baking uh, sourdough bread. I think they were the two options. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> and I can't eat I can't eat bread. So there we go. I was left that with was right, that. Was the, it, was, it was obvious. It was an obvious thing. So um, your Pizzazz series, uh, brilliant, uh, very popular series. The fourth one came out in March. Is that right? Just this March, just gone. That is, is absolutely one? right. Yeah. The fifth one. one's coming out in October. I'm just working. You on have that. been writing an awful lot. That's incredible. That's incredible. That's work, I mean, well maybe that's why I've got a bit of a cold. But anyway, the point is, yeah, it's it's, it's out in October. Um, and I'm loving it. I'm loving um following Pizzazz through her journey as a reluctant superhero. The, the How you can I ask you a question? How so I didn't know, ask you a question. I mean, it, you know, it's they're a great series, and obviously very, very popular and stuff. Mm -hmm. But that that idea of the, you know, the sort of, you know, the superhero at school, and then all the problems that just come with normal life, even though she's a superhero. What was what was your idea for that? Do, was it something that maybe you know inside, or maybe now, or when you were younger, that you kind of long to long to be, or did you just own a cloak? I mean, you know, everyone should own, <laughs> well, everyone should always, own a cloak. I've got several. so you know. I've always got my eye on a cape. So I did think I'd get to have yeah. a cape if I did this yeah. for events and stuff. But obviously then, you know, we've been online a lot. But um, but no, I think um, she started out actually as a, as a comic strip, which I haven't got to hand at the moment, but she started out as a comic strip. Um, and it was really to make my daughter laugh. And I find that I love that there are more and more female superheroes out there. I think yeah. it's brilliant. Captain Marvel's one of my absolute best. You know, she's the one they call in when no one else can save the day. There she is. But um, but superheroes, especially the female ones, it seems, they don't get yeah. to have as much fun, maybe. They're very serious. They're very focused. They're very shiny. Yeah. They're very earnest. And that's great. We need those superheroes for saving the universe. But I thought that's quite a lot of pressure for young girls to, you know, it's quite a yeah. lot, you know, um, to, to, to be that superhero. So I thought, well, what if I turn it around and make her a little bit messy, a little bit reluctant, yeah. and a bit more questioning yeah. about the whole thing, you know? Why does she? I know, I know and also, it? kind of, then it roots it, it roots it, it roots it in the kind of uh, which it does. If you haven't read the Bazaar series, do check them out. They're amazing because it roots it in kind of the everyday sort of family life and situations that uh, we all come across, obviously. And then the, the then the wider things are obviously those those superhero elements with all the all the big villains and all the rest of it. But it, it is you've got those sort of real life problems and sibling yeah. bits and things with your parents and all that kind of stuff. So it really does kind of root it and stuff. <laughs> it's, a, it's an awful lot of fun. And the illustration, I love. I love the illustrations um, in it. And I said, that's what I kind of talked to you about today, because obviously this is a creativity uh, special. And we're going to um, hand over to you in a minute for, for an activity to, to get the uh, children watching. And the teachers, come on, teachers. Yeah, you know, you can do it. Up. Joining in as well. But just when, when it doesn't matter what we're doing in life, I guess, when we're sort of starting off, you know, we, we try things and we, we tend to sort of compare ourselves to other people, maybe other famous people, could there be other people in our class who, who we think are better better than us at something, mm -hmm. and you know that that's kind of normal, uh, but that can stop us kind of doing stuff. I just wondered from yourself, um, and I'll be asking this of uh, Stephen later on and Jonathan. When you were younger, was that something? Did you know you were good at drawing, or was that your sort of strength, and then you weren't mm. so good at something else? So how did how did that kind of come about for you? Well, I was never the best at drawing at school. Um, I was, you know, um, but but my dad um, worked at an art college, so I knew it was something I could do. So I had that, I suppose. But um, but yes, I mean, I I have to stop myself looking around um, 
at what my peers, like, you know, the wonderful Stephen and everyone doing, because I think it's, there's so many brilliant um, authors and illustrators out there. Yeah. If, if I stopped and, and looked around too much, I might, I might, you know, have a bit of a it wobble. Can, can I think the yeah. important thing is to keep going. The important thing is to keep trying. Um, I yeah, never yeah. get things right first time, which I'm probably about to demonstrate with our draw along. Um, <laughs> but that's the fun of it. You know, that's, that's the, fun the fun of it. It's having a go, it's getting stuck in and it's working out what works for you. I will yeah. never draw like, you know, people like Chris Riddell or something like that. But I'm OK with that because I have my style and it works yeah. for me. So um, well, that's yeah, really that's really that's yeah. really encouraging. I think I think that's that's the kind of thing. There's, um, you know, we all know we're going to go on to your, your new book in a minute because it leads into that, actually. Um, um, we all know that voice in our heads. And this is for anybody watching and for all of us. It doesn't matter who you are on the planet is that confidence is a thing, as we know, that comes and goes. It's, it's not yeah. with you all the time. Um, but that voice in your head, you know, that voice that shouts really loudly and said, you're no good at something, you can't do it. We all know that voice. And it's a very loud voice and stuff. But as you said, if you just keep on going, it does kind of fade away a little bit. And you just find, you find your, you'll find your way uh, yeah. in, in life, but also in what you do. And I think that's what you're sort of saying, wasn't it? Kind of yeah. in that sense. And enjoy it. Enjoy it. I enjoy mean, it. funnily yeah. enough, I was going to say this, Pizzazz versus Perfecto is literally all about that. So, you know, when she feels that this person's perfect, how can she ever measure up? But of course, no one's perfect. Everyone no one's perfect, has right. their own things that they're you know, nervous about That's... or reluctant to try. Um, but yeah, just just in, enjoy it. It's about enjoyment especially creativity there are no yeah. right and wrongs it's just about i think happiness. that's the thing there are no right and wrongs and that, that's mm. a wonderful wonderful uh, thing for that it leads into your you obviously got tons of books coming out this year it leads into one of your 500 books that are coming out <laughs> this year. um or 501 i'm not sure you might have just you might have just written one as we're talking yeah who knows, I mean, you know, did, who knows? Yeah. uh so this came out uh on was it did it come out on world book day so that it's the wonderful oh no uh, it's not out yet that was is it not out that was pizzazz. This one came out on oh, World Book Day. That was out on World Book Day. And the music um, in me, when's the music out, in me out? When's this it's out? It's the 12th of May. So yes, it's not out so, yet. So this is an exclusive. This is an exclusive. So in, in what we're talking about with, with, with Sophie, uh, obviously the Pizzazz series, and do check that out. You've got the one coming out in March and one out later in the year. A brilliant series of books. And I'm sure you'll get hooked to that if you haven't already come across them. Uh, the music in me is a little bit different from that. So you can tell us a little bit about it, and then I, I understand, are you going to be okay to re read out? Because it's, it's fairly short read, but it kind of is yes. very inspirational. So just tell oh. us a little bit about how that came about, maybe what it's about a little bit. Well, it's um, basically, I think we've all, like music's such a universal language, isn't it? And it talks to all of us, um, you know, uh, regardless. And it's very, very, it can make you feel all kinds of emotions, can't it? Different sorts of music can make you feel like happy or a bit sad or a bit stompy or all these kinds of things. And, um, and the idea came about, because I think we all have like a little soundtrack maybe in our heads of like, yeah. um, which relates to how we're feeling. So when we're feeling happy, we've got happy songs. And when we're feeling a bit glum, we've got sadder songs or a bit cross, we may have some heavy metal going on. Um, but we've got this sort of, in um, a soundtrack inside us. And basically yeah. the idea was for this character here who has no name. So feel free to give her a name if you want to. But she has no name, but it was to sort of take that soundtrack out of her and show it in the book um, and all the different feelings that she goes through um, during, the, during the story. And it's a wonderful book. If you're, if you, so sit, sit tightly kids, the activity is coming up. But first of all, I really like you to, to hear this book is that there's a, the message in it. Uh, any any good, like any good kids film, I guess any good kids book kind of uh, not just reaches uh, its audience of children, but also will make sense as you get older and throughout your life, really. And I I really think the music in me uh, does that. And um, I, I have mentioned this to Sophie already, so she doesn't have to look surprised. But there's uh, ah, you may have, you I may have heard of Doctor Zeus. Uh, Doctor Zeus, amazing. You know, lots of uh, books, Cat in the Hat, and uh, all kinds of stuff. But uh, Dr. Zeus did a book uh, called Oh, The Places You Go. And it's a long poem. And it's one of my favorite. And it's an amazing, amazing book. This really, uh, I think, compliments and reminds me of that. And I hope that's a really good uh, compliment to Sophie there, because it's, it's got that wonderful feel and a sort of life affirming feel we all kind of need, an encouraging feel. So I'm going to hand over to Sophie now uh, to for a reading of the music in me exclusive for you here at Mr. Dilly Meets today. So take it away, Sophie. Here we go. Thank you. Well, I hope you are all sitting comfortably. So the music in me, why me, Sophie Hen? <gasps> hey, I've got rhythm in my fingers. I've got rhythm oh, in my toes. And there's a beat inside my belly that just grows and grows and grows. 
I'm chock-a-block with music. And guess what? You are too. All kinds of different rhythms go to make up me and you. Your music's always playing and it's very often changing. It can make you feel all kinds of wrong and right. You see, sometimes I get a beat, I get a rhythm that's so happy I could burst. I smile and hop and skip and jump and greet the day head, head first. It's like everything is sunshine. You can't help but have a fun time. And wowzers, there is nothing wrong with that. Then, on other days, the rhythm slows down. Everything feels heavy and the beats just crawling, creeping. My legs are made of stone and I'm sure I should be sleeping, but my eyes are wide, wide open and I feel a little frozen. And heavens, will this day just never end? But maybe next I'll hear a marching beat and march is what I must so I stomp along with purpose I am brave and true and just and even if it looks to me that everybody else I see is marching straight the other way on I march and my music might get swoony and all dreamy and I fly I'm soaring and I'm looping right gliding right across the sky I'm made of stardust and I shine it's like the universe is mine and absolutely everything's all right. But then, some days, it's not. And my rhythm goes all jumpy and I think too many thoughts. I'm everything and nothing all at once and out of sorts. I don't know what I feel like and I just can't put a foot right and the beat is zigzag zigging all around. And then, perhaps, it all gets loud. My music is a giant noise, a wall of angry sound fighting other rhythms in a noisy battleground. And I feel like I'm ginormous and my mighty roar's humongous. Big and loud, I stand apart. I feel alone. So I'll seek out others' lovely songs and sing in harmony. Or sometimes others might just want to sing along with me. Whatever way it comes about, it's magic when it all works out. It feels so rainbow good and I am pink. But Sometimes I lose my rhythm or sing someone else's song and I know it's not my music and it feels not. Then I start to worry, even though it will not help me. So I stop and listen. If I stop and listen, it will come along. So I stop and listen. There it is. And I'm so happy that I found it, even if it's fast or slow, because it's mine, it's just for me and it's the bestest song I know. I will march to my own drum beat. It's a beat that I just can't cheat because the person I'd be cheating would be me. See? And now my beat is on the up and up. My smile is the most. I'm the leader of a big parade. First past the winning post. It's almost like my shoe of all the joy that playtime brings. And gee, it's super great to just be me. So I might not hit the notes quite right. Sometimes I'll lose the beat but I'll listen to my rhythm as my rhythm, super sweet. And if I stay true to my song, then I really can't go far wrong. It's my music and my music makes me, me. And that's the end of <laughs> that is... <laughs> Sorry. Wonderful, wonderful, beautiful thing. Goes straight to the heart of you know every human being on the planet, I think. Oh. Um, so, and it's thanks so much for sharing that with us. And uh, uh, stay tuned, but that's coming out uh, very, very soon. So do get your copy of that. Sophie, uh, as well as reading all that, and as well as feeling unwell at the same time, so she's Sorry. inspired you, and she feels rough, but it's, it's, it's all good. She's now going to lead you all in a in a drawing uh, activity. Uh, so I'm going to hand over to Sophie now. Get your pens and papers ready. Uh, by the way, after this, um, if you do have any chat, any questions for Sophie, do uh, put them on the live chat, and I'll field them uh, to her if we get any at the moment. But I know sometimes YouTube can be tricky to access in schools and the live chat and stuff. So don't worry if you can't. But if you can, do get a few of those in. I hand over to Sophie now for the last bit. Once again, the wonderful Sophie Hen. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you very much. It's nice here, isn't it? Okay, so you might have noticed in the music in me, as I was saying, um, the main character goes through lots of different emotions, don't they? There's happy and sad and angry and a bit alone. So what I'm going to try show you now is I'm going to show you how to draw some of those emotions. Um, and they'll work on all of your characters that you create as well. So we're going to draw them on, on the character in the book, but feel free to use them wherever you want to. So we need to draw four characters first. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by drawing. I'm just going to do it very quickly. 
There was talk of giving this drawing away, but I think I'll do you a better one for the giveaway. But anyway, okay, so we're going to just start by drawing four U shapes across the middle of the piece of paper. There we go. Just four U shapes across the middle. But you can see I've got the pink character underneath. There we go. Four U shapes across the middle like that. Can you see that? So we're going to start with those. Now, if you've done that, we're going to add the ear. And the ear is just an oval shape that I have tucked behind that U. There we go. So can you see we've got our little ears stuck on there? There we go. Can't work out which way I'm going. So we've got our little ears peeking out from behind our U shapes. Now we're going to draw the necks. So we're just going to draw two little lines coming out of the bottom of our U shapes. Now they're looking like cups of tea, which is obviously a delight to me. I do love a cup of tea. So we're going to draw those two little lines. Can you see coming out there like that? And then we're going to draw the top of their, well, their shoulders. So we're just going to draw a line straight across. We're going to keep it really simple. A line straight across the bottom of the necks. So four little lines all the way across. So we've just got to do this quickly so we can get to the uh, get to the emotions. And then we're just going to keep it really simple and draw the outside of their arms. So we're just going to draw, you can see, there we go. Little lines like that, sort of all oh, upside down teacups now. <gasps> Obsessed with tea, yes, I am. There we go. So, we've got our little lines there. Now, I'm going to add their hair, and to do this, I use the side of the lead of my pencil, not the pointy bit. I use the side, and you can see probably that it gives a nice can you see that? It gives a nice smushy, smushy line. So, I'm going to just do really quickly. Fortunately, they've got quite messy hair, so it's quite good to draw quickly. Now, you don't have to rush through doing the hair. You can add hair later on. There we go. And you can add all sorts of different weird and wonderful haircuts. I'm just going to do it really quickly. So we've got some faces and heads to draw our expressions on. Oh, there we go. Look. Really quickly. Oh, last one. There we go. So we've got our four, our four characters like that. There we go. Very quickly. Very messy. Okay. Now we're going to get onto the expressions. So what I thought I'd do is, first of all, um, I would show you how to draw, oh, where is she, when she's all alone? Where is she? Can you see that? Do you remember that one where she's all alone? Oh, there we go. She looks a bit sad, doesn't she? So we're going to start with a sad, a sad face. So we're going to start with our nose. What, how, we, noses, lots going on, isn't there? But we're going to keep it super simple. Oh, look, even if I get in the shop, there we go, there, down there. Just got a little dash. We're just going to do a little dash for her nose. So add a little dash. Gosh, it's very confusing. I feel back to front. There we go. Little dash for her nose. Now we're going to draw her sad eyebrows. Eyebrows are really key when you're drawing expressions. So what I like to do is I like to pull the face um, that I'm going to draw. Maybe play some music. Maybe play a sad song to get me in the mood. Pull a sad face and um, and then see what my eyebrows are doing. And what eyebrows tend to do, I've got one rogue eyebrow that won't, won't do this properly. Sad eyebrows that there they are. They point upwards. So we're going to draw two diagonal lines like that. There we go. Two diagonal lines like that. Got those. Now, underneath those, we're going to draw two loops. Because those are going to be her eyes. There we go. Two loops. And when you've drawn those or U shapes underneath the eyebrows, when you've drawn those, you can colour them in. There we go. Now, I'm going to draw her sad mouth. Now, sad mouth. Do that. I'm going to make it really little because sometimes I think that it works better if you just do a little sad mouth. I can't do it, my mouth's too big. But anyway, I've just given her a little sad mouth. So there you've got a sad expression. Now, next, I'm gonna do a furious expression. Do you remember when her wall, it was an angry wall of sound. Oops, there we go. So we're gonna start with her nose. It's moved up a bit. It's moved up a bit, hasn't it? Because we need lots of room for that giant angry mouth, which I'm gonna draw now, which is sort of like a squarish shape. You don't want to make it look like a happy mouth, like a squarish shape there. Can you see with rounded corners? And we're going to colour that in. Now, I am whizzing you through this quite quickly. I know you can play it back, though, can't you? Because I know you've got lots of fun things coming up with Stephen in a minute. So we've got an angry, angry mouth there. Now, her angry eyes, she's so angry ah, that her eyes have shut. They've gotten shut. They've um, There's not enough room for that angry mouth and her angry eyes. So I'm just going to draw two little V shapes pointing towards her nose. Can you see those there? Two little V shapes pointing towards her nose. Now I'm going to add another little line in the middle so we can see that they really are. Oh, there we go. Her eyes are screwed up. Now, what's really important when you're drawing expressions? 
Yes, eyebrows. So we're going to do two angry eyebrows. Now, angry eyebrows are the opposite of sad eyebrows that you can see. Instead of going like that, we've got and they're pointing down at her nose. There we go. So you've got some angry eyebrows in there. If you want to make a super angry, you can do little lines that I get those there. You can give her little lines in between her eyebrows as well. So it really pays just to pull the face, look in the mirror and see what your face is doing. Now we're going to do, she's marching on with purpose. We're nearly there. We're marching on with purpose. So marching on with purpose, it'd be easy to make that look a little bit cross. But what we're going to do for her, we're going to start with her eyebrows. We're going to start with her eyebrows this time. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw lines, but we're going to give them a little curve up at the side. You don't want to make them like her eye, angry eyebrows. We're going to just draw a line and then make it curve up a little bit. So she's sort of determined. And then we're going to do those loops underneath again and colour them in. Remember, we did those little U shapes underneath the eyebrows and then colour them in. So we're going to do that. I'm really worried I'm going on too much. Then we're going to add the nose, just a little dash, just a little dash again. Now, purposeful mouth. She's marching on with purpose. Yep, I think that's it. But I'm going to give it a little slant upwards so we still know that she's happy. She's purpose. She's marching on with purpose, but it's happy purpose. She's not cross. There we go. So there we go. Now, that's our purposeful face. Ooh, she's decided. She's off. She's marching. Last one, obviously, because we're here with Mr. Dilly. We've got to do a super happy face, haven't we? So I'm going to do the nose high up again because we need a, lots of room Ooh, for a super happy mouth. Do the nose quite high up. And then the eyes, when you really smile, that happens to your cheeks push up into the space where your eyes are. So I'm just going to draw two upside down U shapes. Oh, there we go. It's like the cover. Can you see? There we are. So we're going to do that super. So two upside down U shapes for her eyes. And then I'm going to draw a curve and like sort of like a little smile. She looks like she's got a very big chin there. Little smile there. Not too curvy. And then I'm going to draw a big loop underneath it. For that big, happy, smiley face. There we go. Big, happy, smiley face. And I'm going to colour that in. Last but not least, we need some very happy eyebrows. What happens? Oh, up they go. So we're going to draw some nice, big, happy eyebrows up there like that. Oh, no, like, like, there we go. Like that, like those eyebrows there. So look, we've got our sad, angry, determined and happy faces. But there are loads more expressions. So um, as we were talking about earlier, have a go, look in the mirror, look and see what your eyebrows are doing. Maybe start with those. Don't have to overcomplicate it. Keep your noses nice and simple and um, and have fun with it and enjoy it. Um, and I really hope you enjoyed that. So back to you, Mr. Dilly. Good for you. You're a, you're a genius, a genius. It's fantastic. It's, it's, what's wonderful about that is um, <clears throat> just with a few different strokes of just the mm. angles of stuff or how you can change your whole face. And I think that's is a great because, you know, we, we look at something, you think, how, how do you possibly draw that? But when you break it down into those little bits, it gives you something to build up with. So I hope, hope you enjoy that. And as Sophie said, is um, if you have that, if you registered today, obviously you'd be watching. Uh, you may be a lot of people are watching on catch up, but you obviously even if you're watching live, you can catch up again and then follow through that activity again yeah. and, and pause it as you wish in order to sort of do that in your class. So that's fantastic. Uh, now, Sophie said um, uh, before before we move on, Sophie said uh, she is going to offer a, a drawing as, as a, a sort of a competition. I think that drawing's amazing, Sophie. You could offer that drawing. Just just sign that one. I'll pop it's another beautiful. one in as well. I'll, I'll pop, pop another one in. <laughs> so all you need to do for that, and Stephen will be doing the same thing later on. <laughs> You'll see the email at the bottom of the screen there, Dilly's Doodles. Um, if you are uh, in your class, do some drawings. Literally just send them as a zip file or a few JPEGs to that address there, mrdillybrents at gmail.com. And you'll be automatically entered, uh, put your school name obviously on there, into the draw for those drawings. And that'll be announced on next month's Mr. Dilly Meets. But for now, can we please put our hand together? Thank you very much. Uh, Sophie will be popping up just briefly at the end of the show today. But for yeah. now, round of applause. Fabulous <laughs> Sophie Hen, please. Thank you very much, Sophie. Speak to you later on. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you very much. Okay, so that was fantastic. I hope you enjoyed that wonderful little way into drawing there for anybody ready to do. But we're going to move on to something different now. Before we meet Stephen Lenton in about five or ten minutes or so, um, I'm going to introduce you, uh, and you, you may be familiar with this if you watched previous Mr. Diddy Meets. We have a poet in residence, a fantastic poet. Uh, the Dirigible Balloon is his website, and he's going to have a, a small, I think we just run the one activity uh, uh, today, a small poetry activity using words, of course, and maybe a little bit of drawing as well. Please welcome back to the show, Mr. Jonathan Humble, please. Mr. Jonathan Humble. Hello. Hello, sir. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you, Mr. Dilly. How are you? 
I'm really, really good. It's, it's wonderful to have you back. It seems an awful long time since World Book Day, so it's, it's great to have you with us today. The, the theme today uh, of the show is obviously creativity. As Sophie just demonstrated there, I'm going to have Stephen later on, you know, about using, expressing ourselves uh, with, with, with drawing and stuff. Today, you're going to be uh, doing a bit of an activity with words. Uh, before we go on to that, if I could just ask you uh, something. Um, creativity in itself, uh, in all its forms, uh, whether you're a child or a teenager or an adult, is uh, obviously it's usually important to find an outlet for that. How, how would you, how would you advise people to sort of go about that? Maybe they're doing it in their classroom, but also for children outside of the classroom at home. Uh, any sort of tips for that, or any sort of encouragement? Yes. Well, uh, I used to be a teacher, Mr. Dilly, and I always just say my to my children in in my class that uh, it really didn't matter if they made mistakes because it's the way that we learn. You know, you don't improve with any skill unless you are prepared to actually make mistakes when you're doing yeah. it and it's fine to do that um whether you whether it's an, a, a drawing activity a writing activity maths sport yeah. you know the, the the most uh skillful people made mistakes in order made to mistakes. get to where they are now yeah. you have to and all, and all, and all, yeah, it's that kind of there's also there you know also that line there i don't know what it is it's probably yoda who said it in star wars but there are no mistakes only lessons in the Absolutely. sense that basically is that if you look at everything like I'm going to give this a go and I will get better at it the more I yes. do it, uh, that that's how that's how you get better at it. And I think that's that's the lesson from today. Really, it's just you yeah. know give things a go. You'll find you know some things you're not going to be as good at maybe, but other things. But if you try things, you're going to find, as we said earlier, so you're going to find your way through. And uh, and you'll find the all about, that, oh, go on. you'll find the thing that really floats your boat. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, so today, Jonathan, uh, uh, we have an, an activity for you. So. For the children, we'll just need a pen and paper just as before, I presume. Is that all? Piece of paper, something to write with. And uh, and like I say, when they draft this out, if they make mistakes, it's absolutely fine. That's fantastic. Um, I think we just do the... Uh, Jonathan's got something involving hand today. Is that right? Your That's hand. the one. So we just do the one today. So um, enjoy this. Uh, and then after Jonathan, uh, we are back with Stephen Lenton. So I'm going to hand over to Jonathan now. Mr. Jonathan Humble from the Dirigible Bloom today with an activity for you. Thank you, Jonathan. Here we go. Right, guys. Well, this is a, a poem that you can actually do on a hand print, okay? And on the digit of uh, on the all the digits of your hands, there are poetry prompts, okay? A poem. Uh, the other ne the next one is is like it is and and the last one a poem is. Now, the first thing you've got to do is sit with a friend and work out a list of things that makes you feel happy, okay? So you sh and you share that with your friends. So I made a list here of, of the things that make me feel happy. A great game of football, visiting the seaside, a bowl of hot chips, thinking about tomorrow, running with a Labrador, unwrapping a birthday present, making toast with your granny, finishing a good story, a big fluffy pillow, uh, a day in the hills, building a sandcastle, smelling newly cut grass, listening to Starling's chatter, that type of thing. You make your own list of things that make you feel happy. Then you get your piece of paper and you get the biggest hand you can and you draw around the hand, okay? This is mine. It's, if you Maybe if you get an adult uh, and draw around their hands, it's, it's good because it gives you a little bit more space. When you've drawn around the hand, what you need to do then is you need to put the poetry prompts on the digits. So on the thumb, I've put a poem. On the index finger, is like. On the middle finger, it is. Next one, and. And finally, a little finger, a poem is. Now, what you do after that is you use your uh, list of things that make you happy and you draft out some ideas that fit in with those prompts. So as I was showing you earlier, okay, this is one that I did, uh, a, a poem, because I'm the thing that makes me happy is, uh, is poetry. So I thought poems, a poem is like a Sunday morning coffee. It is a letter from a friend and an early swift returning. A poem is a daisy in a meadow. OK, I like all these things and poems make me feel happy. Another example, OK, from another list of things that makes me happy. Uh, let's have a go this one. Get it the right way around. A poem is like a walk in summer sunshine. 
It is a leap over morning rainbows and a view from a hot air balloon, preferably the dirigible balloon. A poem is a surprise present. Now, you can go on and on and on with those because there must be lots and lots of things. You can share the things that make you happy. And when you've written a line, if you find one's not working, that's fine. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect first time uh, through. You can put a line to it. You can try something different. Work on it. Take words out. Put words in. And, and in that way, you will be able to produce a hand poem like I've just shown you there. Uh, I've got whoa, have I got one more to show you somewhere. Uh, yeah, this was the one. I mean, that's what it looks like if it was set out as a poem on a page. A poem is like a walk in summer sunshine. It is a leap over morning rainbows and a view from a hot air balloon. A poem is a surprise present. And if you have a go at doing those and you'd like to send, if you want to, send some to the dirigible balloon, below my face there, you can see the link, the, ed the email address, editor at dirigibleballoon.org, and, uh, and we would be happy to put some of those up on our website. Jonathan, fantastic, fantastic. So, uh, as well as uh, you can be, if you can send in your artwork to Mr. Diddy Presents, uh, and you may get that featured on the show and, and to win uh, win those uh, drawings by Sophie and the upcoming Stephen Linton as well. Uh, also, you can get these poems if you do it. And if you send them to, as he said, editor at dirigiblebloom.org, you get a chance to have them on this website with all these other wonderful poems as well. So plenty of uh, incentive to get you uh, writing today and drawing today. Jonathan, as always, an absolute pleasure to have you on. Please, That's can we pleasure. wish Jonathan a fantastic, uh, fantastic day and a goodbye. Thank you very much, Jonathan. The wonderful Jonathan Humble from the Dirigible Bloom. Dot org. Thank you very much, Jonathan. Now, before we meet Stephen Lenton, just a very couple of quick things. Um, <clears throat> I think I mentioned earlier in the program, on Mr. Dilly's World Do uh, Book Day special, uh, we had uh, the illustrator Wiccan Parekh, who is the illustrator of the Worst Class in the World series and many other books. And Rick and Carney did a, a drawing of himself and his favorite World Book Day character, which I think I said at the beginning was the tiger who came to tea. And you could enter into a competition to win this drawing for your score, and you can frame it and put it up on the wall. And he's signing that drawing as well. And today, I'm very happy to announce the winning school uh, of that competition. And in a moment, in, a moment in Dilly's Doodles, we're going to see uh, some examples of some of their artwork they, they sent in today. And the winning school and making its way to you in the next few days of the Rick and Perec artwork competition is St. Saviour's C of E Primary School. Well done, St. Saviour's. So let's have a very quick look at some of their artworks of the children they drew themselves with their favorite World Book Day characters. Here we go. So well done, St. Saviour's here being primary school. Fantastic stuff there. But if you want to get featured on Dilly's Doodle and have a chance to win those, uh, win those uh, drawings by Stephen and Sophie, as I said, uh, please do get sending them in to mrdillypresents at gmail.com, a subject line Dilly's Doodles, and uh, all is good. Now, we have our final guest for you today. It's the wonderful author illustrator himself. Please put your hands together. Mr. Stephen Lenton, please. <laughs> Stephen <laughs> Lenton. Hello. Hello. on the show today. Hello, Stephen, sir. How are you? I'm all right, although my hands are hurting from all this clapping. <laughs> lots of lots of clapping, lots of clapping, all the rest. But you, but you, you feel well. I know Sophie's not feeling too good, but you're feeling well and well and up for this today. I'm all right. Yes, I've been doing a lot of schools already this week, and I haven't caught anything yet. So fingers crossed. Oh, okay, I'm well, all hopefully, right. hopefully you'll be all right and won't suddenly just fall off the stall during the show. Or no, no, I'm all right so good. far. Stephen, it's lovely to have you with us today. So, uh, Stephen, um, obviously you've illustrated loads of books, uh, all sorts of uh, different age ranges of books as well. Um, but for those who aren't aware of maybe your own books or a couple of the other, some maybe slightly older books you've illustrated, could you just, uh, like Sophie, just tell us a little bit about who you are, you know, and uh, what you do, please. That'd be lovely. Okay, yeah, Stephen Lenter, um, author, illustrator. Uh, similar to Sophie, actually, we both entered a Waterstones and was it the Guardian or the Times competition years ago um, to illustrate a book with Michael Morpurgo. We both lost 
um, but it did help kickstart our career. So I started about, yeah, 2012, 2013, something like that. So uh, you might not know my face, but you might know the Shifty Me Gifty and Slippery Sam series. I just happen to have a pile of books next to me. I don't know if put them here. Um, 101 Dalmatians with Cruella de Vil's eyebrows on the cover. How to Grow a Unicorn. Currently working on the sequel, How to Grow a Dragon. Um, that one. Let's find Fred with the magical moving eye cover. I like that one. That that reminds me of Action Men. I don't know, but, but oh, yeah. Eagle Eyes. Eagle Eagle Eye, Action Man, Eagle, eagle Eyes. eyes. Um, can I just ask you? Because that um we, we we spoke to uh, Jonathan about sort writing and Sophie about this with Illustrate and stuff. So it was interesting what you just said is that you, you entered this competition yes. and both lost, but it kind yes. of got you sort of into the so how did that you know because that, that's that's a lot of it doesn't matter what area of life you're in, I guess, you know, but especially in the arts and stuff like that, there's a lot of that sort of rejection stuff. Like I'm, you know, yeah. and at that moment you can feel, oh, I'm no good at this. I can't do it. And you, you stop. But obviously, you know, you're older than our audience watching today uh, at that point. Um, but what made you then sort of carry on and not kind of sort of go, oh, I can't do this? What was the kind of well, thing that you going? That competition was brilliant because it was featured in the newspaper on the Sunday and it had an example of all our illustration work. So there's other people like Ellie Dolan, um, as well, who entered. So everyone who entered who wanted a career in children's books actually has a really healthy career in children's books. So I think what it yeah. did was um, it showed a lot of publishers and editors and designers out there who we were, and they thought, oh, well, if hundreds of people entered that competition and these are like the top six, seven people, then let's yeah. have a look at them, let's talk to them. So Nosy Crow bought, me, just around that time as well, um, the yeah. editor from Nosy Crow um, was looking for a person who could draw dogs and cakes and I also happen to have an exhibition on. <laughs> That's a good mix of dogs and cakes. Yeah. yeah. Well, I had an exhibition on in Crouch End, where I used to live in North London. Yeah. And a lot of my pieces of work were dogs and cakes. And they just thought, oh, he can draw dogs and cakes. He's new. He has, he's entered yeah. this it's competition. That's fascinating, Steve, because it's, a lot of it is also a bit about timing, isn't it? You just hit, yeah. hit a moment yeah. and, you, and it just Definitely. kind of you know, what works, which, which is amazing. What was yeah. the, um, so Stephen, as you just showed you, has illustrated lots of, lots of books since that point. And then you obviously made the shift into, you know, writing and illustrating uh, your own books. Am I, I don't yeah. know if this is right. Was Genie and Teenie the first of, of them? Of sort, sort of. Well, the first book that I wrote was called, um, if I've got a British copy, uh, oh yeah, I have, uh, Princess Daisy and the Dragon and the Nincompoop Knights was the first book that I wrote with Nosy Crow again. Um, yeah. And that's a picture book. But picture books are so like uh, Sophie's an expert, but doing a rhyming picture book is so difficult. Um, so yeah. what I do is I work with expert authors on the picture books like Tracy Corduroy, Peter Bentley and Rachel Morris Rowe on all those because they're just so good. It would take me two or three years to try and write something like they do, but they sort of can do it really quickly. So I like to choose the authors that I work with because yeah. they're just such experts. I'd love to illustrate a Sophie Hen book if she ever gets fed up of illustrating. I'll, I I'll believe she's you, on I'll the show today. So you, you she might be listening in, so oh, you she have never heard of her. Never heard of her. <laughs> yeah, no, never heard of her. Genie, well, Genie and Teeny, a brilliant. Uh, sorry, Stephen, go on. So you're saying, yeah, no, I was going to say. So Genie and Teeny are the first. Oh, I've got a couple first. as well. Wait there, let me hold them up as well. Here we go. I've only got oh, these two. There we go. There we go. Genie one, and Teeny, look at this. Lighting. It's beautiful. Um, yeah, so tell me about this. They're, they're, they're really a, an awful lot of fun. I mean, I you know they are good. really really good. And you've got so you've got the third. <laughs> one coming out soon yes now i haven't this this is a fake copy because this is just a copy of book two. Oh no book one uh with the new cover on but that's what the cover is going to look like and it's out a, um a month tomorrow so it's out yes month um, tomorrow. three thursdays and it's from, genie and teeny the wishing, the wishing well. well the wishing it's, well it's, it's like, I, i'm quite amazed you got so many different ways of putting wish into a title it's quite uh, eventually would, would you run out you got make a wish wishful thinking and the wishing well. I mean, I suppose it's kind of well, we haven't we well. haven't wished upon a star. We haven't yeah, there's no there's quite in fact, just before I came just before I came on today, um the ed the editor said, Oh, we need to start thinking about the title for book four because it's got to go in a catalogue or something. So I've got today, I've got so to you've got today. Title. Can I just put I don't know if this is if this may be in the new one or something. In uh, the first mm -hmm. one's make a wish, isn't it? The uh, I can't remember her name. Who's the baddie in that? Lavender Lavinia Lavinia. Lavender, yes. Is 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 she gonna make another appearance at some point? Well, she might, she might do, 
Um, yeah. Because there's definitely going to be four books. What happens in, in the obviously the first one is introducing the characters. In the second yeah. one, Teeny, the dog's owner, uh, Tilly takes him to school, and all kinds of things happen. I'm going to read out a funny bit from that in a minute. Um, okay. So then, in book three, Grant gets homesick because he's having a lovely time here on Earth, but he did get banished from home. So it's all about them trying to help him to get back to Wishalusia, yeah. where he and lived. Grant. Grant is the genie. So Grant is brilliant. Grant is Grant the, the genie. genie. Yeah. Himself, in case you're not familiar with it, yes. uh, they're, 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 they're brilliant. They're brilliant, and I love I love the uh, you know, the way the illustra illustrations work with work, work with the text and stuff. So if they're not in your library at school, uh, get them in your library, yeah. and if they are in there, bo borrow them. And if you've read them already, you've got them at home. Fantastic. So Jeannie and Teeny, third one coming out soon from Mr. Stephen Enton. But Stephen, as I said, he's going to read you a little bit. Now, what are you going to read us today, Stephen? Well, I'm going to read a bit from book two, Wishful Thinking, and it's a section where the school bully at school, hopefully there aren't too many school bullies at school these days. There were when I was when I was younger. Um, there he is there on the back cover. Nasty. There's also a random llama on the cover as well, because it's all about take your pet to school day, which is why Teeny the dog is allowed into school. So um, at one point, the school bully steals uh, Grant's teapot and starts making some wishes because whoever has got his teapot or his tea lamp, which I just happen to have the real one here. Is that is that it? Whoa, is look the, at you, that. You might be able to hear it. Listen. He's in there. He's asleep. He's in there. He's just, just explain, they, they get, well, without giving it away, because obviously the, the genie's in the teapot because the, the, the lamp gets smashed, doesn't it? It's something like that, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. His, his, yeah, yeah. His lamp gets battered on the way down to it, so he has to find a new um something to live in yeah he tries a few different things like um there's um yes yeah, so tramps shoes and yeah right. all kinds of smelly things that he sort of tries to live in but he eventually finds a teapot so i'm going to read the section where the school bully nicks the teapot and starts making a couple of wishes and i'm going to start with his second wish fantastic over to you Stephen lenton with genie and teeny reading from uh, book two of the series here well done here we go brilliant okay so there is the uh bully there now, for my second wish, I want a pet. Now, I don't want your bog-standard boring guinea pig or rabbit. I want something big, something scary, the best pet you could possibly have. Ooh, a poodle, suggested Grant. Boring, Billy replied. What about a cute little piggy? Too fat and smelly. A kitten, Grant asked, hoping to persuade Billy to wish for something manageable. Billy's eyes widened. Oh, I know, an alligator. Oh, imagine having a pet, uh, pet alligator. Grant frowned and looked nervous. Genie, I wish for an alligator and make it snappy. Gulp, gulped Grant <laughs> as he closed his eyes, wiggled his nose and said his magic wishy word. Alakablama, bum whistle. And there in front of Grant and Billy was a... Radiator, Billy moaned. I said alligator, not radiator. Sorry, Billy, <laughs> Grant apologised. It's the pressure. I'll try again. Alakablama, bum whistle. Grant opened his eyes and the radiator was now a gladiator. Well, that's way cooler than a radiator, Genie, but not as cool as my scary pet. I want an alligator now. The alligator was just about to ask what was going on when Alakablama bum whistle and there finally was a ginormous alligator. Thanks, Genie, a pet at last. And what a whopper. I'll call him Arnie. The alligator chomped a <laughs> toilet roll and then an actual toilet and then the entire toilet cubicle. I'll save my last wish for later, Genie. Right now I'm going to go off to show my new pet. But before Billy could hop on the alligator, it snarled, opened up its jaws and ate through the boys' toilet door and scuttled off into the corridor. Oh, heck! Come back, Arnie! And I'm not going to read anything else. That's brilliant. Well done. Brilliant. You can see the style. A lot of fun. Brilliant, brilliant books. Thank you very much, Stephen. So Stephen um, is going to... I don't know if you're able to do this fairly sort of swiftly. would be good. Oh, yeah, they can I'm, I'm, I'm quicker than Sophie. Don't worry. <laughs> I, stick to my I could talk all day to all my all my guests on these shows. It's my, it's my fault. Uh, so I'm going to hand right. back to Stephen now. He's going to do the activity. So so if you're watching um, live or watching on catch up, um, uh, catch this up. this is what you can do. Get your pen and papers ready. I hand over Stephen. He's going to guide you through another fantastic draw along activity. Thanks very much, Stephen. Over to you again. Okay. Thanks very much. Here we go. No Thank you very much. I'll go quite quickly because as Sophie said, you can rewind and fast forward. Zing. 
thing. So at the back of each book, there is a little draw, how to draw. In the first one, it's how to draw uh, the genie, Grant. In the second one, it is how to draw Teeny the dog. And in the third one, which I can sort of show you on my iPad, but it might not show up, it's how to draw Grant's teapot. So that's what we're going to draw today, because as part of the competition, um, I'd like you to design your own teapot, OK? But what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you here. Now, if you find it tricky, because we're going to start by drawing a circle, if you find it tricky, find something to draw around. I found a uh, sellotape, which is just perfect to draw around. So find something round to start us off and draw around that. I'm going to do it super quickly because I know we haven't got very long. Someone took up all the time. Uh, I don't know who that would be. Right, so there's your circle. And then what we're going to do... No, I love it. And then what we're going to do is add a handle. If you remember the old um, song, there's here's my handle, here's my spout. I can't remember the rest of the song. Uh, so we're going to draw a handle like that and then draw the inside of the handle like that. So you've got your teapot handle. And then we're going to draw the spout, which comes up like this. And do a little V shape at the end like that. And then it's going to come down and gets a bit fatter towards the bottom like that. It's quite tricky to spout, but as long as it sticks out, it's got a, a bit of a shape at the end and comes back down, you're OK. Now we need to add the lid. So just draw a line, a curvy line along the top. It's quite tricky drawing, um, holding. Um, this is my sketchbook that I'm just ruining right now. And then we need a um, a little handle at the top, a little round, not handle, what's that called? The lid, the top of the lid. So it is just kind of almost just like Grant's real teapot. Sorry, Grant. I keep picking him up and putting him down. Uh, and then we're going to draw the base. You need a base or else it's going to roll around like a weeble, isn't it? I don't know if we still have weebles. It's going to roll around like something. Um, and then we're just going to draw a base on there, a buttery biscuit base. Like that. So that's it's quite a bad teapot drawing uh, because I'm holding it. But now here's where you come in because that's your basic teapot shape. And obviously Grant has lots of stars over his. Uh, but what I'd like you to do is design your own. So you might want rainbows or clouds or smiley faces or something. So I'll just show you what Grant's is roughly like. So his has got stars all over it, quite wonky stars, like this, uh, like that. Um, so that's sort of the gist that you get. So I'd like you to design your own teapot. That's your little challenge that I would like that to set. That is fantastic. So... This is um so Steve, are you gonna are you gonna give that drawing away and send it away, or are you gonna do another drawing, or what are you gonna? No, do? because I wouldn't give my worst enemy that drawing. <laughs> so no, I'm gonna give you. I'll do your really nice drawing. It's really fascinating though, Stephen, because it is. I'm no, oh, sorry, go on. Say so what are you gonna give away for? I was gonna say I'm gonna give away a good drawing, also a signed print of Genie and Teeny, and also there's only a hundred in the world, and there's only about thirty left now. 29 after I give this beauty away is a pin badge like what I is wearing on my t-shirt. Oh, that is wonderful. That is wonderful. So if you if you get those drawings in, design that teapot uh, as uh, Stephen just uh, uh, went through uh, very, very briefly there and uh, get those drawings into Diddy's Doodles address at the bottom there and be in a chance to win all of that from Stephen Lenton, which is fantastic. Imagine. Stephen, uh, fantastic uh, stuff. Um, I think what we're going to do is we're going to keep you on, Stephen. Bring Sophie back as well. Just a welcome back, Sophie. So Should hello I? again, Sophie. Hello again. We're all back on together. Can you not hear me? Can you can you hear? Have you got your audio on? Can I'm you hear muted. Sophie? I did ah, hear you that muted. though, Stephen. Ah, that'll be fine. Those old mute buttons. Wow. So listen, we're just going to do one final thing uh, with uh, Stephen and Sophie, and you can all join in. Oh with, no, yes. Oh, and yes. this is this is the thing. Okay, I, I don't know where I got this from, but uh, it's a bit of fun. All you need to do is uh, get with a partner in your classroom. So obviously there's two of you. OK, and have a bit of paper in front of you and a pen. It's very, very simple. And Stephen and Sophie are going to join in this uh, as well. Little do they know, but they are. Uh, <laughs> and basically what you're going to do is, is I'm going to give you 30 seconds on the, on the clock here, if I can get my clock working. And what you're going to do is you're going to uh, look at your partner. So look in your partner's face. And when I start uh, on, the, uh, on the button for 30 seconds, it's called a blind contour drawing, <laughs> which is kind of fancy. But basically what it means is, is that... As you draw your partner's face, and you'll both be drawing each other's face at the same time, you're not going to look down at what you're actually drawing. 
Okay, Absolutely. so you're going to try and draw their face by look, just staring at their face, <laughs> but not actually looking down at what you're drawing, okay? And at the end of that 30 seconds, you will hold up each other's drawing to each other and show just what masterpiece or what incredible mess that, uh, <laughs> that you've drawn. Sophie and Stephen. So obviously Sophie uh, do Stephen, Stephen do Sophie. So are you ready, Sophie and Stephen? I mean, no, but okay. No, but we're going to go for it. If you're already watching, I'm going to click 30 seconds on there. So get ready, get in your pairs, get facing each other if you can. Get your pen and paper ready. Look at your partner's face, okay? Do not look down at the piece of paper oh, as gosh. you're drawing. 30 seconds on the clock, beginning <laughs> now. Off we go. Get drawing. Right. Here I we just go. immediately look down. Oh, no, see, I don't know where I've gone already. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> It's quite scary, isn't it? Okay. Anyway, got 18 seconds now. left. Keep drawing. Oh, you is that all? Yes, all you've got um, left. 18 hours left. I might have really got Sorry. Keep going. Don't reveal them till I say at the end. Eight, seven. Come oh, on. No! Six, five, I can't four, dare to, to three, two, ah! and time is up. Time is up. Time I is up. Look okay. down. I looked down. Oh, dear. What we're all looking forward to in a I'm minute. Sorry, don't show, show do them yet. We're going to do the big reveal in a moment, okay, of these masterpieces. Masterpieces, okay? So um, don't do it in your classroom yet, okay? It's and if really you can, expensive. try and cover them up if you can. You probably you can see each other doing it. But if not, <laughs> I'll give you a count of three. One, two, three. You reveal it to each other watching what you've, what you've drawn. And uh, Sophie and Steve are going to reveal to each other what they've drawn. It's how they truly see each other. <laughs> I know. Okay, so on a count of three, here we go. One, two, Love you two. three. Off we go. Reveal. <laughs> 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 you know what? Right. I've got to say though, that's not bad. You can still us. see it. You can see it with your eyes closed. So I've got to tell you, that's pretty impressive stuff. If if you prefer these drawings instead of the ones that Sophie and Stephen are um are entering, of course, feel uh, feel free to to email in. But am... Sophie, Stephen, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on the show today. Thank you so much uh, for being Thank a part of having me today. And for your, for your lovely words and your enthusiasm and uh, and joy and encouragement, it's fantastic. Hope to speak to you again. For now, can we please have a big thank you and a big goodbye, Mr. Stephen Lenton and Sophie Hempley. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Wonderful. And not forgetting, of course, Jonathan Humble, who was on earlier. We're nearly finished, my friends. We're nearly finished. One other thing to do today. I've got to announce the winners of the online Twitter giveaway for Sophie and for Stephen's uh, book. So, um... The winning score of Sophie's Pizzazz versus the Demons, uh, signed and then a signed doodle, is a year four teacher, Mr. Mount. Mr. Mount, a year four teacher. So round of applause, Mr. Mount, for winning the Sophie Pen giveaway. And the winning score or the winning teacher, which should go to your school, of the Stephen Lenton competition, which was Jeannie and Teeny, Wishful Thinking, a signed print and badge, was a year three, four teacher, Miss Tebs. Miss Tebs, well done, Miss Tebs. And I'll be notifying you on, on Twitter uh, for that. Don't forget uh, to get in your artwork and send it in. We can just have that on then for Dilly's Doodles as well to win those drawings and that prize by Stephen uh, and Sophie today. Uh, also, don't forget to send your poems in to the Dirigible Balloon and I'll be emailing you all, all the uh, information like that again after the show a bit later today. Uh, so Dilly's Doodles, get them in for that and hopefully you can either win the prize or get featured on the next show. Remember, my friends, just keep on keeping on. Never give up. Just keep on doing things. And sometimes you just got to try and find things a different way. And eventually you will find your right way. I hope you enjoyed it today. It's been a pleasure to have you on today. My name is Mr. Dilly. It's goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from me. Thank you. Goodbye, my friends. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>